Um, the category of Male Fighter of the Year was also not unanimous, as my colleagues and I tore it up in our communication channels discussing the different candidates. Alex Pajeda was our winner. Congrats, Watan. Uh, were you all on board uh, with this one? And did your vote or did your vote go elsewhere is what we want to know here. And we're going to start with you, Nolan, this time. Yeah, I think this one's a little bit closer. I came into this debate or this discussion when this was first proposed and I said, yeah, it should be Alex Pereira. Now, I know some there was some pushback. Um, Alexander Volkanovsky's name uh, is, you know, I think that's really what the debate is going to be here. Um, I see both sides of it. I, I think that I do lean with Pereira just because, again, you know, I kind of look at these the, the, the year that he had and I say he kind of had a more impactful year overall. I mean, Alexander Volkanovsky, you know, he beat the Korean zombie, came back, uh, you know, beat Max Holloway, which is, I think, you know, probably the best performance either fighter had. But I just kind of when I look at the, the, the zombie fight, I feel like zombie perhaps isn't what he was once was. Um, I just feel like um, Alexander Volkanovsky, sure, he's the, the greatest pound for pound fighter in the world right now. But Alex Pereira to come in and do what he did and kind of have this year where he went from a guy that essentially had no MMA experience, um, you know, and, and came through and went 3-0, and won the title against uh, his rival, Madison Square Garden, a rally TKO. I just felt like, again, um, we, we weigh all these things and, how, you know, which weighs more than what. But I, I just... There was just something about this year that he had that I felt was really special and went kind of beyond just the wins and losses. It was just such a, a rare sort of run, a quick run up the top. Sure, UFC has a, a, a say in that. They can put people in whatever position they want without necessarily the same um, necessary merit build. But at the same time, he goes out there, he beats Israel Adesanya in a, in a great fight um, and is now the middleweight champ of the world. I, I just, I did lean with him. I, I understand the, the arguments for Volkanovsky as well. So I'm not as comfortable or confident, you know, having to pick one person, but that's the name of the game. And I did lean with Pereira. All right, goes, you're coming up next. I want to see what side you're leaning on. Let's try this. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one, this yeah. one was a tougher one, guys. We really had to go back and forth on this one. Um, but both guys did what they what you asked from them, right, in the year. It, it was pretty good. Uh, Volkanovski defending his belt along the way, I think that carries a little bit. You really have to nitpick when it comes down to greatness, guys. That's why we, we have to pick every little thing we can here. Um, if you look at the strength of schedule, okay, uh, Volkanovski with Korean Zombie, you know, the, yeah, he did kind of fall off a little bit. But here's the thing. When you look at pictures of uh, the Korean Zombie at the end of that fight, right, like, he looked like he was in a car crash. Max Holloway looked like he didn't know what hit him. Uh, Volkanovski really, really took it to these two guys. Now, you're looking at two victories versus three. And as the year progresses, like, if you really, really want to nitpick, does does the Cannoneer win over Strickland? Does that kind of, like, take a little bit off of, of Strickland's case, you know, for Pereira? I don't know. An extra victory is an extra victory. That That's a big deal. Um, so there's so much that you have to kind of go back and forth. He did dethrone a guy who's been champ for a while, you know, has been pretty destructive and doing bad things to other people. So you got to give him credit there. But at the same time, you have to think, well, he was kind of losing that fight up until the very end. So my decision came down to this. Volkanovsky was reminding people throughout the year that he's one of the baddest men on the planet. Alex Pereira did something phenomenal, but there's still question marks, right? So that that was just the little edge that I gave Volkanovski, but there really is no wrong answer. It's so close. Yeah, and goes not only was he losing that fight versus uh, Izzy in round one, he basically almost got finished. Man, this one was a tough one too. Let's hear what Danny's got to say. Yeah, this one was a a very complicated one because you have to weigh in a lot of factors, right? But in my opinion, and, and by the way, before I say this, I just want to say that. I'm okay with Alex Pereira being the fighter of the year. I mean, how can you say he didn't have a, a phenomenal year? He he obviously did. But in my mind, Alexander Volkanovsky was the 2022 fighter of the year. I mean, what that guy did in that year is far more bigger, far more important than what Alex Pereira did. Alex Pereira became a champion, which is not easy to do. Extremely, extremely difficult and extremely special to do. But let's not forget, he did get somewhat of easy matchups. Uh, uh, Bruno Silva, since fighting uh, Pereira, he went 0-2 in 2022. Sean Strickland went 1-2 in 2022. And he was losing the fight against uh, Adesanya, as Goes mentioned. So, again, a phenomenal year. But, you know, 
the UFC kind of did walk him, you know, hold his hand and walk them a little bit to a title shot. Let's not forget that. And, and there's questions about how he will fare in the future against guys that can wrestle, guys that are, are, are elite wrestlers in that division. Whereas Alexander Volkanovsky, he had two title fights. Yes, one less fight than Poatan, but still both championship fights. So we're talking about 50 minutes of fighting compared to 55 minutes of fighting um, with, uh, with Pereira. And, and in that year, he came in as a good champion, but a bit of a doubted champion. He was coming off a fight where he almost got finished by um, Brian Ortega in a couple fights with close submissions. Granted, yeah, he did put a beating on, on Ortega. But still, then you also had Max Holloway that same year in 2021 putting a, a crazy beating on Kelvin Kadar, giving us a fight of the year uh, contender with Jair Rodriguez. Let's let's say how it is. Alexander Volkanovsky going into 2022 was a doubted champion. A lot of people thought that still the best fighter, even though the record was 0-2 against Max Holloway. A lot of people thought that the best fighter out there at 145 pounds was Max Holloway. And in that process, in that 2022 year, he put a historical, terrible beating on the Korean zombie. And then he went on to do the same to Max Holloway in a fight that, I mean, it looked like he was you know, levels below him. And in that span of a year, not only did he defend the belt twice, but he did enough to convince many people uh, to be, you know, the pound for pound, um, to be number one in the pound for pound rankings today. I mean, you go look at that list, he's, he's right there. So in a year where you defend the belt twice, in a year where you become the, uh, you know, today's GOAT, you know, pound for pound best. I mean, that's, that's pretty great to me. So uh, no pun intended. So in my opinion, you know, Alexander Volkanovsky, th that was the vote. But again, Poetan, phenomenal year. So, I mean, I, I can't be mad about that either. Well, let's send it back to Nolan because it seems I I'm also on Team Volkanovsky, but I think you guys did a good job. There's nothing really else I can add to it other than, hey, Pajeda became champ. Volkanovsky became a superstar, you know. But Nolan, I mean, was this a tough one for you? Did you, you know, go back and forth? Or do you feel like we're missing something here? No, I mean, it was difficult. I, I think we all kind of are on the same page here, right? When we make these arguments and we're looking at a sliver of the, the big picture and we're saying, oh, I think, it, I think you know, the argument should be made this way versus this way. It almost sounds insulting to the other fighter, which I kind of hate, you know, because you're, you're looking at either one of these guys are two of the greatest fighters on the planet right now. And to kind of, uh, you know, say that, well, they, you know, they, uh, Volkanovsky fought a zombie that didn't look great. Or, you know, Alex Pereira was kind of losing that fight against Israel. It's not, it, you know, it kind of it comes across as like a backhanded thing. And so I, I, I hate doing that. But yeah, I mean, I totally, I came into this debate feeling when we first proposed it, feeling pretty confident in, in Alex. And then with some of the arguments that were made, I was like, shoot, like, uh, you know, this is more of like a tie than I thought. So I did go with my gut. I did feel like the kind of maybe that breakthrough factor that he had this year, um, which is, you know, it's a different award, but I felt like it was just kind of his year. Like this was the year of the Alex Pereira. Like we knew Alexander Volkanovsky was good and he did what we thought he would do to, 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 to you know, Korean Zombie. And who, he did what I thought he would do to Max Holloway. I know not everybody was on the same page there. I just feel like Alex kind of had that that it factor. He had that that run and just kind of topped it off in a, in a great way at the end of the year. So that's why I kind of lean with him. I understand all the arguments. I don't think Sometimes it's comparing apples and oranges, to be honest, not to try to kill the fun of this debate, you know, and say that that we're all nobody's wrong, wrong and nobody's right. But that's right. kind of the way that it honestly is.